The topic of this chapter is the Hegel law. The term Hegel law refers to rules of Eichel dealing with the conduct of hostilities. This chapter is the second chapter where we examine substantive rules of Eichel. In the previous chapter, as you will recall, we examined the Geneva law concerning protected persons. We will now analyze the fundamental issue of whom and what can be targeted, or perhaps more properly, cannot be targeted. The law of targeting is characterized by three fundamental principles. The principle of distinction, the principle of proportionality, and the principle of precaution. As we will see, these three principles are interrelated and they impose constraints on belligerents when they decide to launch attacks. In some military circles, these three principles, distinction, proportionality, and precaution, are referred to as the DPP requirements. We'll start by analyzing, in section two of this chapter, the principle of distinction and proportionality. The principle of distinction requires belligerents to distinguish between civilians and combatants and between civilian objects and military objectives. Attacks on civilian populations and infrastructure are prohibited. However, it may be the case that in order to achieve a particular military objective, civilian casualties, sometimes referred to as collateral damage, are inevitable. The principle of proportionality provides a framework for ascertaining whether, in a particular attack, the incidental harm caused to civilians and civilian objects is lawful. Once we have established the role and the scope of the principles of distinction and proportionality, we'll examine in sections 3 and 4 the concepts of civilians and civilian objects. As we will see, these concepts are defined in the negative, in the sense that civilians are not military personnel, while civilian objects are not military objectives. While this may sound simple for you, in fact, it can lead to extremely complex situations. The third main principle regulating the law of targeting is the principle of precaution. We will investigate the precautionary principle in section 5. That principle requires belligerents to take a series of precautionary measures when attacking. It also imposes precautionary measures against the effects of attacks. The final sections of these chapters concern the means and methods of warfare. In these final sections, we'll examine the principles HL employs to regulate the means and methods of warfare, mainly focusing on the principle that means and methods of warfare cannot cause superfluous injury or unnecessary suffering to combatants. In previous chapters, we have seen that the gap between the law of non-international armed conflict and the law of international armed conflict has been significantly reduced through customary law. This is particularly true with respect to the conduct of hostilities. The two bodies of law generally converge on that matter. The same rules normally apply in international armed conflicts and non-international armed conflicts. In the case of international armed conflicts, mainly through treaty law, and in the case of non-international armed conflicts, mainly through custom. However, some differences remain. We will see that there are, for example, some differences concerning reprisals, concerning the definition 
of the civilians protected against attacks, and regarding the protection of specific objects, such as natural environment and cultural or property. More generally speaking, the conduct of hostilities in international armed conflict is re regulated in greater detail as it is primarily based on treaties rather than custom. Lastly, the range of acts that constitute war crimes, especially before the International Criminal Court, may vary according to whether the conflict is an international armed conflict or a non-international armed conflict. For example, some acts such as attacks against civilian objects or disproportionate attacks fall into the competence of the International Criminal Court only if they are committed in the context of an international armed conflict. Although such attacks are prohibited under IHL both in international and non-international armed conflicts,